As we await the verdict from the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, let's take a moment to analyze the key points under consideration. The tribunal should currently be in the process of thoroughly reviewing all the evidence, including INX election conduct and the arguments presented by both parties. INEC initially claimed that a glitch prevented the uploading of presidential election results on election day. This glitch, however, seemed to affect only the presidential results and not other elections like senatorial and national assembly contests, which were held concurrently. INEC asserted that the glitch was the cause of the non-upload. However, in court, INEC seemingly reversed its stance, citing a federal high court judgment that upheld its authority to conduct elections as it sees fit, even without the need for uploads. This inconsistency raises doubts about the integrity of their claims. Furthermore, INEC's second argument, stating that the upload was not necessary and that they collated results using hard copies, appears counterproductive. If they admit that uploading is an obligation, it is contradictory to assert that it wasn't essential. Another claim they made was that the lack of upload did not impact the election outcome, which conflicts with the evidence presented in court. For instance, the Labor Party presented results from two states, Rivers and Banu, collated by a mathematician. These results directly contradicted INEC's announcements, showing that the Labor Party won in those states, whereas INEC declared APC as the winners. This acceptance of the contrary evidence points to INEC's guilt, undermining their arguments defending the non-upload. The Labor Party witness confirmed the accuracy of the evidence, but did not collate all results due to time constraints during the court proceedings. This situation leaves INEC with little room for defense, as the petitioners have effectively refuted their claims and even INEC acknowledged some of the presented evidence. Given the gravity of the evidence and the pattern of electoral manipulation suggested by the non-upload of presidential election results, it becomes essential for the court to examine the remaining evidence diligently to determine the true winner. Some may question why Peter Obi did not demand to be declared the winner in his final address. However, the reason for this strategic move was to avoid contradictory arguments similar to what happened with ANEC. The Presidential Election Petition Tribunal's duty is to meticulously assess the evidence, ensuring a fair and transparent resolution. It is crucial not to reward election rigging and uphold justice to serve the best interests of the Nigerian people. Now it is up to the judge's discretion to determine whether this election should be canceled, despite clear indications of rigging. Even the respondents argue that the non-compliance did not affect the election's outcome. Therefore, the tribunal can assess the remaining results to ascertain if this claim holds true. Ultimately, the rightful winner should be declared, and the judges may decide to calculate the votes and declare the winner accordingly. However, it seems intentional that they omitted this line of thought not to encounter the same situation faced by INEC. Though the evidence proves their victory, there are concerns whether it aligns with Bola Tinubu's interests. Nevertheless, if the judges choose to act impartially, they can recognize that the non-upload of presidential election results favored APC. Therefore, they have the option to calculate the results, keeping in mind that INEC argued that the non-upload did not impact the outcome. Apart from the non-compliance by INEC in determining the highest lawful votes, the other aspect of the petition mainly focuses on Tinubu's disqualification. The presiding judge's comments seeking forgiveness for Tinubu were inappropriate. His role is to interpret the constitution and laws of Nigeria accurately, not to engage in discussions about forgiveness. It appears that technicalities are being explored to avoid disqualifying him, but it is vital to consider the evidence and Tinubu's eligibility critically. Tinubu's qualification remains a significant concern. The petitioners are not advocating for his disqualification merely to secure their victory, but because of genuine issues, such as forged certificates and involvement in a forfeiture case. These critical issues should not be disregarded. Regardless of the tribunal's decision, nobody in Nigeria can escape the consequences of their actions. Justice must be served, and those who caused the cancellation should not benefit from a new election. They should not participate in the fresh election since their actions led to this situation. The correct winner should have been declared if INEC had acted appropriately. 
If the presidential election is canceled and a rerun declared, the situation might worsen. The governorship election in Lagos demonstrated attempts to prevent people from voting, especially those not of Yoruba descent. These manipulations hindered individuals from obtaining evidence to challenge the results at the tribunal, thereby undermining the integrity of the election process. Therefore, cancellation should not be an option to consider. Instead, the tribunal should carefully evaluate the evidence before them and declare a winner accordingly. It is essential for Nigeria's progress not to reward election rigors. Those who claim to be popular should contest in free and fair elections to test their true popularity. Cutting corners, blocking uploads, and intimidating voters should not be tolerated. Nigeria deserves a transparent and just electoral process.